Catholics from around the country are heading to Texas for the fifth Encuentro. To talk more about it, the founder of the Board for Catholic Association of Latino Leaders and an expert on the history of the Encuentro, Mario Paredes, and he joins me now. Mario, thank you so much for joining me. I'm looking forward to this conversation because you wrote a book called The History of the National Encuentros, Hispanic Americans in the One Catholic Church. Tell us a little bit more about this history. Uh, well, uh, thank you for the invitation. Oh. Delighted to be here. Uh, we began in the early 70s a process to look for integrating Hispanic American in the life of the church. Mm -hmm. And it began here in Brooklyn. Oh, everything good Father starts in Brooklyn. Father <laughs> Jack O'Brien, mm -hmm. he was the prime promoter mm -hmm. of the first national encuentro that took place in Washington, D.C. And to that call joined Monsignor Robert Stern from New York Archdiocese mm -hmm. and a number of other directors of Hispanic ministry in the Northeast. From there, now we have the first encuentro in mm -hmm. 1972. The second Encuentro, we had it in 1977, and the third Encuentro in 1985. And from there on until now, mm -hmm. the fourth Encuentro truly was not a fourth Encuentro. It was a, a national celebration mm -hmm. of the millennium. Now, as you watch uh, the Encuentro progress and move forward, What's the atmosphere like? What are the major changes you've seen from event to event? The first that uh, really called my attention is the greater number of diocesan bishops mm -hmm. that are participating in the process and they have committed themselves to attend. The second uh, number that we should point out is the participant is more than 3,000 Hispanic America mm -hmm. going to Texas uh, for deliberations. Uh, and the third element is the amount of international observers mm -hmm. that will be attending uh, the event to follow the conversations of Hispanic American Catholic mm -hmm. in today's church life. Mario, given your expertise uh, with the Hispanic community, with the Encuentro, how would you describe the current landscape of the community, especially now in this climate after the clerical sex abuse crisis? Do you think that's going to be part of the discussions? Uh, I have no doubt that it will be mm -hmm. simply because it's such a an incredible phenomenon in the life of our church today. But also, I think uh, there are other matters that are as pressing, not as scandalous as they are, but they are painful. Immigration is an important uh, issue. It's a big cry to have new laws that address the question of the undocumented uh, immigrant. Also, no health care. Uh, Health care is a dramatic situation for the poorest in this country, you know, and unfortunately, you know, our government is continuing to cut in, mm -hmm. in health care rather than to redesign, you know, the providing of better health care. I have a final question for you in the time we have left. When you go to update this book, The History of the National Encuentros, what will be your vision? What will be the, the new Encuentros? What do you want to see? Uh, I dream to see a full integration of Hispanic American in the life of the Catholic Church, where that integration means communion and participation, which is really what we need today in our beloved church. And what will be the biggest challenge to that really quickly? Uh, the biggest challenge will be the loss of Hispanic America to other Christian churches. Mm. Uh, so we need to redesign a program of evangelization, a missionary program, and to establish you know, a way of, of disciples of the Lord bringing together the family mm. of God. All right, Mario, it has been a pleasure talking with you. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Thank you for the invitation.